Stay so fresh, so clean, think they like me, like me. I wear more supreme than a hype bitch. Only blue, no green, don't excite me. I can make a hoe out your wife. Jeremy's got up on my toes, act like Shaki. Made her get down on the bottom and she tied me. Pull up extra icy, I'm not playing hockey. Niggas think I'm weird and they don't really like me. Today we're taking a look at the new unlock switch. This is an alternative to the MIG switch, so let's get straight into the unboxing. In the box we have a ribbon cable which connects the programmer to the flash cartridge. This is used for programming the firmware. We then have the programmer itself with its two buttons and acrylic case. It features a USB-C port for connecting to your computer. Then we have the unlock switch itself, which looks very familiar. It features the same acrylic clear case as the programmer, and has a red button on the top which is used to switch between your games. In the box we also have a USB A to C cable which is used to connect the programmer to our computer. Compared to the MIG switch we can see that the unlock switch has a very similar design, including the pinout on the back and the dimensions and size of the printed case. The unlock switch features a button on the top and the MIG switch doesn't. That's because this is the V1 variant of the MIG switch. The V2 variant would have a button on the top, although I haven't been able to get my hands on one of those just yet. The unlock switch has a case that clips together with the button being a separate removable piece and the PCB comes right out of the case by pulling on the micro SD slot. The MIG switch however uses a screw on design and the PCB comes out the same way. Under the microscope we can see that the unlock switch PCB looks to be hand soldered. I don't think this is necessarily bad but I did notice some parts of the PCB that looked very messy including these two capacitors that seem to be bridged onto the same pad. Today's video is sponsored by JLC PCB. JLC PCB is the cheapest and best way to get your PCBs printed professionally. They offer lots of customization on PCBs including the colour of the silk screen, thickness of the boards and lots of other things that you need to make your PCB perfect. They offer a top notch quality service at low affordable prices. They also offer 3D printing and CNC machining, making them the perfect solution for all of your project's needs. Go to the link in the description below to get your PCBs professionally printed today. Big thanks to JLC PCB for sponsoring this video, now let's get back to it. Some components were even touching parts of the IC. The mix switch and the unlock switch seem to use the same ICs, one of which being an ESP32 based chip. Although this is kind of hard to tell as on the MIG switch they actually scratched off the text on the top of the chips. I assume this was to try and prevent people from making clones of these devices. I found this strange but although the unlock switch flash card is hand soldered, the programmer looks to be machine soldered. It looks a lot cleaner and personally I don't know why they didn't go for this approach on the flash card too. This is the ribbon cable that connects the unlock switch flash card to the programmer and as you can see it comes in this little anti-static bag and is branded with the unlock switch logo. I will say that I much prefer the design and look of the unlock switch compared to the mix switch. I found the screw to be very temperamental on the mix switch and very easily stripped in the plastic housing. Although the unlock switch's design is not only cosmetically better but also seems to function better too when removing the PCB. Now for me, this is where things really go downhill, as this unlock switch actually doesn't have any firmware at the minute. Yeah, that's right, the thing that you're gonna pay 50 pounds for doesn't work. I'm really not sure why this is the case. I think it partly could be down to maybe some kind of legal proceedings, like say if unlock switch was taken to court by Nintendo, maybe they could say, well look, our project doesn't actually do anything. I really hope that the firmware ships soon because at the minute all we have is the cable, another cable, a programmer which doesn't do anything. 
and a flashcard that doesn't do anything either. I did privately message Unlock Switch and ask them, well, what's going on with the firmware? And they said, quote, we're not providing a solution for this. I think it's quite brave of them to call it a solution considering it is a requirement for their product to work at all. Maybe we'll see another company coming through which might release the firmware. I'm not sure if that's some kind of legal protection for them. I mean, I'm not convinced that if Nintendo wanted to take Unlock Switch to court that the firmware not being available would change anything. It's a shame really because a lot of the issues I had with the Mix Switch are actually resolved in this product. But I just can't fully recommend it or even use it myself to test it and give an honest opinion on it if it doesn't work. I'll probably do another video when the firmware actually comes out. Um, but yeah, it's, it's just a weird kind of situation for me. I'd say the main improvements for me have got to be the design. I really like this clear case with the red button. I think it looks really nice and quite modern. The PCB, although it's hand soldered, does look a lot nicer with the silk screen on there. And overall, the packaging coming in a box compared to that little cardboard one that the mix switch came in. It's a better product for now, based on what we've seen. The hardware, in my opinion, is a better product. The design makes it a better product. The functionality is not a product. It doesn't do anything, so it's a difficult one to review for now. I have no doubt that a firmware will get released, whether it's through Unlock Switch themselves or another Twitter account or maybe some GBA temp posts or something like that, but for now, we have none of that, so it's not something I can recommend. So should you buy the Unlock Switch? Not for now. I don't recommend anyone buys a product and then expects functionality or features to come later. Because really, if Unlock Switch never wanted to release a firmware for this thing and just wanted to take their money and leave, then it would be up to the community to work on this thing. My experience is talking to Unlock Switch themselves has been strange. I've not found them to be the best at communicating with me and I'm not really that confident in their ability to support this product should something go wrong. They seem to have a very when it's ready, it's ready attitude, which is fair enough, but I think when you have paying customers, they expect a bit more communication. But that is it for me for today. That is the Unlock Switch hardware review. Once again, once the software comes out, I'll be doing another video. Big thanks to JLC PCB for sponsoring this video. I'll once again leave their links in the description below. I've also now got a Patreon, so if you want to join that, it's about a dollar a month, and you'll just get access to some behind the scenes content. And mostly it's just a little donation every month to help me make videos like this one. Make sure to subscribe, leave a like down below, and leave me a comment letting me know what you think about the unlock switch. Do you think the firmware will come out? Do you think it's worth buying? Do you think the hardware is an improvement over the mix switch? That is it for today, and as always, I'll see you in the next one.